Guys, welcome to today's video where I'm gonna show you how to put all the things that you need in order to harvest power directly from the sun into your vehicle, specifically your Lexus GX470 today. And at the end, I'll show you that you could power a fridge or any similar appliances basically indefinitely with this setup. First off, you need to determine what region you live in. And by that, I mean, we need to determine how many watt hours the sun provides for you per day so that you can size your solar array and your battery setup accordingly. For me, I determined that a 100 watt solar panel could get me about 360 watt hours of power per day. So all I would need to do is be able to get through the night with my battery setup and then recharge it with those 360 watt hours when the sun comes up. Now let's talk about the basic layout of an off-grid solar system. First, you start with your solar panel, then that goes straight into your charge controller through a fuse on the positive side. And then you have a connection to the charge controller from your 12 volt battery. In this one, it's a deep cycle battery. I'll show you what kind of battery we'll be using in a little bit, and I think you'll like it. From there, we have wires that are larger gauge going from our battery to our inverter. Inverters essentially convert battery type DC direct current into household type AC or alternating current. This allows you to power household type electronics from a direct current source, such as a battery. And speaking of batteries, I went with a 12 volt 50 amp hour lithium iron phosphate battery. I'm not gonna get too much into the specifics as to why these are awesome batteries. They provide a great balance between safety and energy density. I'm just gonna say that I feel the most safe with having this in my car when mounted in a sideways position. And it provides a lightweight option with high energy density. I think there's just no reason not to go with them other than the cost which in this case is not too prohibitive. I determined that 640 watt hours would get me through the night with the loads that I would like to power without sun. So this battery was a great option, weighing in at only 13 pounds. Next is our 80 amp fuse that goes from our battery to our inverter. And next our 700 watt inverter from Renogy, as well as their small 10 amp charge controller and battery cables. Next, we have the cables that go from the solar panel back to our battery system, some fuse taps, the 100 watt solar panel itself. This one is flexible, some inline fuses along with some quick disconnects, heavy duty double sided tape from 3M, and finally some vinyl wrap. I got a two by five foot sheet. Here are the full specs for my solar panel. And before we start, I'm just going to get an idea of where the solar panel is gonna sit on the hood of my car and then start getting to work cleaning. You can go to some other YouTube videos to see what the best products to use and stuff. I am not a super vinyl guy, so I just did some nice soap and water and made sure everything was as clean as possible. Now it's time to cut out our vinyl sheet. And for that, I'm just gonna start by getting a good idea for how long it needs to be. And then we can get an idea for the width once we start getting it onto the hood. Uh, first, I wanted to heat up the vinyl wrap a little bit just so it's that much more pliable. Uh, it's a little bit difficult to work with when it's stiff as a board and it's kind of cold just out of the packaging, but it's a little easier when it's a little bit more pliable. It also wants to roll back up when it's not warm. So warming it up helps with that as well. So here you can see I'm just lining everything up, trying to get it as close to the final setup as I want and cutting the excess where possible. Now be careful with this around the middle because when you're laying it down and you kind of stretch it, it kind of shrinks in the center. So just be careful of that. Uh, if you pull on two sides, it's gonna get more slender near the middle. And I did end up having that issue, so I wish I didn't take so much off of the, the front part, but this side did okay because I was able to stretch it over. Now I'm just making a mark where I want it to line up just for future reference before we go in and actually start. And here I'm making that ever important lengthwise cut I was talking about before. I wish I didn't have this quite as trim as I did, but it ended up working out for me in the end. It's really not, it doesn't take a rocket scientist to do. And as you can see, we just kind of work with it, stick it and unstick it where needed to get the bubbles out. And everything actually ended up working out, even though we have 
pretty much no experience working with vinyl on an exterior. If you saw our video on vinyl wrapping the interior of the GX, you know that it's pretty simple to work with. I wouldn't let this part of the project stop you from doing it yourself at all. It's really simple. So now I'm just unwrapping the backside of the solar panel. I kept that stuff on while I was doing all the testing just to make sure everything was protected. And you can see my little one just going after those cables. Now it's time to lay down the industrial grade double-sided tape. Uh, this was a little bit tricky to get the backing off once we got it over to the car, but cutting it to length wasn't too bad at all. I just tried to, you know, make the most amount of coverage that I could around the outside edges so no water intruded in. And then I made a couple of extra ones on the inside there as well, two right there and then two on the furthest outside edges. Then I did a final clean on the vinyl. This is just water and a paper towel, guys. Nothing fancy. It's nothing really complicated like you see on some other YouTube videos where they make vinyl wrapping seem out of reach. Now you see my wife helping me get the backing off because she actually has nails. Uh, I had to use like the knife blade on my multi-tool and stuff to get this uh, backing off so just be prepared to be kind of patient with this once you get a little bit of it off it kind of comes off no problem so just uh, keep that in mind and now it's time for us to just turn the solar panel over and stick it down after doing one final sweep for dust and everything like that uh, I was really nervous about that part, but my wife apparently wasn't because she just plopped it down and I was like, oh, okay, I guess we're done. Uh, but it ended up working out perfect. She has a much better eye than I do, obviously. So uh, I freaked out for no reason a little bit. And then I just went over all of the tape and pressed it down with that same paper towel I was using before, pressing down the outsides and then, you know, going on to all the pieces of tape that I know I laid down on the underside previously. Now let's talk about routing the wiring. I just went underneath the hood here and underneath that weather strip right in front of the plastic cowl there. This is pretty straightforward and doesn't really require a bunch of explanation. And so far it works flawlessly. And go ahead and take a look at what that final product looks like. Super happy with how that turned out. Now let's get into our inline fusing. So. I got these inline fuses that I mentioned before and they come as like a circle so you have to make your own cuts and then you got to strip the end. So this is the end that's going into the charge controller. I made that side a little shorter because, you know, I don't need that much wire length to make it into a charge controller and it goes in just like that. And so here I'm just kind of tightening it down. I wish that this was a Phillips head screw for some reason. Renogy went with a flathead screwdriver, but that's, uh, you know, just a small gripe. Then I have the other end, which of course is gonna go into my connectors. Now I got quick disconnects. Uh, most people go with an actual switch here, but I wanted to keep this super budget and I didn't wanna spend an extra 10 bucks each on two switches. So I'm just going with these little disconnects so that whenever I don't need the solar, I can just safely disconnect these so that the whole system is completely dead. And uh, yeah, it's basically as simple as crimping them onto the end of the wire. Uh, and then crimping the other side on the end of the, the wire that, that feeds into the charge controller and you kind of hook them together just like a normal harness plug in your car. So here you see me stripping the battery wire, the battery wire that goes into the charge controller, not the one that goes out to the inverter, but the battery wire that goes into our Renogy charge controller. Now I'm hooking up that side of the quick disconnect and crimping it down on the end. And as you'll see, uh, it's pretty strong. It'll, it'll hold. Uh, you pretty much just plug it into the other side and then you have a inline fuse going straight into your charge controller. Now let's start talking about feeding our solar panel wiring through the whole car to the rear of the vehicle to meet up with our battery setup. Now for this, you can review one of my videos where I show you how to get all these sorts of wires through the firewall, through this grommet. Most vehicles have something similar, so just uh, find your own application. Here I'm just making sure the wire is long enough to make it through, and it looks like we have plenty of length. So if anything, I'm gonna have to trim a little bit. I was a little worried that 20 feet wasn't enough, but it ended up being perfect. So now you can see that I have the red wire, the positive wire through, and I'm just getting the black negative wire through. And this is a little time lapse of kind of what it takes to go from the inside, go back under the hood and kind of feed it where you want it to go. Sometimes it gets caught on stuff and you just have to release it. So I'm just getting it into the driver's side seat there to hold it. 
for now, and you can see me doing the final bit on the positive wire. Now I'm gonna show you how to take out all the necessary plastic pieces in order to feed this through your entire vehicle super clean. So first take out your floor mats. If you have any aftermarket ones, take those ones out too. Then get your interior removal tool and let that help you get your footrest out. Then we're gonna work on getting this side kick panel off. The first step of which is to take out that little black screw. It actually unscrews. I found that out in my last video. And this panel actually pulls straight out. So here you see me demonstrating for the camera. It's easiest to pull straight out on this in order to get it out. Straight out, I mean towards the rear of the vehicle. This floor mounted panel comes straight out. It kind of pops out and then you just kind of stuff the wires in where there's some space and then you're ready to go ahead and reinstall the foot kick panel thing and when you're done with that you can snap in the floor panel and then get that footrest popped back into place and then you're pretty much done with that now let's go to the back seats first before you do anything you got to take out this little foot rest. I'm not sure exactly what it is, but it prevents you from taking out that side uh, floor panel thing. So just unbolt it with some 10 millimeter bolts and go ahead and take out that floor panel, then feed it through the B pillar cover there. And it goes through just like that. And then do the same thing. I stuffed the wire over into the back in the meantime and routed these wires through as cleanly as I could. Then just pop that floor panel back into place and I routed my wires kind of where that foot rest thing goes on. So go ahead and if you wanna follow that you can or you can route it all the way through that wheel well cover but I decided against that cause I thought it would be a lot of extra and unnecessary work to be honest. So as you can see, I got my wires all the way through and I have my 700 watt inverter already bolted up to my SMW off-road Molly panel on the window there. And now I'm just testing out the wire lengths, making sure everything's gonna fit in my devious little plan to mount the battery. And here is my Renogy charge controller. And again, I'm gonna use that double-sided tape because it worked so well for the solar panel. And for a charge controller, which weighs basically nothing, it worked perfect. So guys, check out where I'm mounting my battery. I'm using a little bit of packing foam that came with the battery, stuffing it into that storage compartment that I think nobody with a GX actually uses. And I'm just getting a, uh, a shoelace, tying that into place, and I'm supporting that with a bungee cord to give it a little bit of a spring back there. That's it, guys. That's it for now. I want to make it super simple. Uh, maybe I'll have a more permanent mounting solution later. But for now, this is working great for me. So now I'm just hooking up all the wiring. First, you have your battery cables that go into your charge controller. So you have positive and negative into the charge controller. The negative does not have a fuse, but the positive you're gonna connect to that inline fuse that we connected earlier that we, we stripped both sides and we put it in. So go ahead and get everything like that squared away. So now the battery's all hooked up to the charge controller and the inverter is actually hooked up as well. So I could power something right now. Uh, I could plug something in right now and basically drain the battery, but I'm not charging the battery yet. For that, I'm gonna have to hook up the solar panel cables I just routed through the side panels of the car. So again, I'm just stripping the ends of that and then I'm putting the negative directly into the charge controller and the positive I'm putting into that inline fuse connector that I talked about earlier. So here I'm crimping it together and plugging it in. You always wanna do your solar panels last. As you can see, I have a cover on my solar panel currently. Let's see what happens when I remove the cover and if I make any power. So here you see it, there you go. That's when I took the cover off of the solar panel. We're making a gang of power here, boys. This is looking great, and I think this will have a great time charging up my battery during the day, uh, basically just topping it off to get me through the night. And let's see if it will power a fridge. All this work, and let's make sure we get some reward for it. So here you see me plugging the fridge directly into the 700 watt inverter, and we, Gotta turn it on and we have power to the fridge, guys. And I just kept an eye on the charge controller for a while and made sure that the numbers all matched up and that we are, had good output and input numbers. Then we did a freeway test of the solar panel mounting and it passed with flying colors, guys. This thing works perfectly. And let's take a look at the final product. I have the fridge, it feels cold. We have cold drinks in there and everything. 
and take a look at how clean this wire routing is through the side of the vehicle. You cannot tell that you have wires running through there until you look at the hood. So that's well and good, but does it keep the fridge cold overnight and even with a rainy morning? It does. So this whole system passed the test. It got me through a night. That's all I was really aiming for. I bet you with the amount of sun that we get in Southern California, this panel will keep the battery topped up while running a fridge and other accessories virtually indefinitely. Thank you guys so much for watching. We'll see you in the next 